Welcome to the After the Show show, because four hours is not enough. I just want to know, like, what dream did you get to live out as a receiver, never getting, getting to throw the football? Any re reverse passes, anything like reverse that? Reverse passes in, in uh, high school, not college. Yeah. My yeah. coach didn't trust me enough. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't see the film. Coach, I hope you're watching. How did you feel to throw to Jason Seahorn? Well, I was trying to throw it away from him. So, if, I mean, it felt great. A little pressure? I can actually like, say, uh, could like be the, the pass. Like now you know what the, the, the pressure of a quarterback is when you have a wide open receiver and you're like, oh, I can't mess this up. <laughs> like, he's sitting there like, don't overthrow him. Oh, man. But, I mean, on the flip side, I probably would be running around trying to throw that ball. Yeah, it was you're a right. Live game. It's yeah, true. Yeah, there's yeah. any pressure. That's why we yeah. had the time to do an out and up because yeah. there was no time right. pressure. And I know this: that the great thing about football, the great equalizer, is the, the jam, the line of scrimmage. Because yes. what a quarterback has to do, because he knows he's got a, an internal clock. The reason I love the press coverage is if I get up in somebody's face and I do that and I jam you, the moment he sees that, he's like, okay, there, first of all, there's pressure. Yep. Second of all, I was like, I got to go someplace else. He's jammed the line of scrimmage. I, I, I don't have time to wait for him to get open. Next option. Ne you know, they just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a great equalizer for DBs to get up and do that to discourage a quarterback from even waiting for you to get open. Interesting. The well, psychology in the of that line mind, When you see a jam like that, you're happy because if you get past him, he's done. So they know so, yeah. a lot of their reads, not all of them, go to straight fade. Or slant. We know that too, oh, though. Oh, sure. Especially, uh, especially on a short field, right? Yeah, and if you know you're beaten, ball's coming. Like, <laughs> if you press and you lose a line of scrimmage, you know he saw it. The ball is coming now. Yeah. Like, they don't miss opportunities like that. No. Hey, so we can be real now because it's the after the show show. Did you let him win? Not at all. I don't, what I did was I jammed him up, jammed him up, and ha I had him on the out. And then he went up, and I was like... We talked about this in the back. I said, <laughs> you know, we all say, well, I got that one play in me. And then you pow, pop a hamstring. So when he took off on the vertical, I went, not you're, worth it. You're half fun. Let it go. Not worth it. I had my hope for the bad pass. Yeah, you were. You're like, please, please overthrow him. That's what I said. I said. Keith, don't throw it too far, but don't throw it too short. I will say the best part, part you, you caught it, though. That was the best part of the whole thing because after it all played out, if you had dropped it, it would be like, oh, okay. No, I know. That's all fun. I was yeah. thinking. You, the, the psychology of a wide open receiver, too, it's like, it I'm works for both you and the quarterback. Yeah. I did it in high school. I laid in the end zone after dropping a deep pass in the corner. Just kind of like, and you just kind of lay there as the whole crowd goes, oh, and your face is in this grass. Like, Duck it is, up. I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's fun, though. I mean, and the, the, the great thing about the game is, you know, all the varying aspects of practice for those who play. It's like you've got your one on drills like that, mm -hmm. where we know that the in, in practice works just like this. One on one drills, it's in the favor of the offense. Seven on seven drills, sword in the favor of the offense because there's no defensive linemen. Then all of a sudden you go to team at the very end because mm -hmm. seven on seven doesn't have linemen, offensive or defense. And at the very end we go to team, mm -hmm. and then it's like the great equalizer because you've got those four <laughs> defensive linemen coming at the quarterback, and you know his clock is triggered. You know people are in his face. He can't. He doesn't have windows to throw through, and, and the progression is so good for defenses to work through because it's like difficult, hard, easy. You know, so you leave with some confidence towards the end of practice, mm -hmm. whereas if they flipped it the other way, you'd leave getting beaten one-on-one -on -one drills going, oh, that was a terrible day. Defeated. So, yeah. Who was yeah. the best quarterback today? Um, today, I would say it really has to be Tom Brady. I mean, as you just think about hate him. You can hate him all you want. I think they hate him because he wins. Um, but I really so have a tremendous amount of respect for Aaron Rodgers. Um, there's a lot of quarterbacks out there. The, the thing that Tom Brady has done that's so different is win with anybody you put out there. Yeah. Like, like and I'll tell you what, you've never heard of, and now they're for his names. time. You gave him a phenomenal Hall of Fame receiver one time, and that year they set the world on fire, went 16 to 0. You know, Randy Moss had had yeah. 25 or 26 touchdown receptions, broke the record. <laughs> yeah. Tom Brady at the time had 50 plus touchdowns, I think, broke the record at the time. I think Peyton since beaten it, but. The one time you did give him somebody, they lit it up. Other than that, mm. he's got guys that play some defense, some offense, get open. They make it work with that quarterback. And, and last question, the best quarterback you ever played against, the most difficult. Ooh, Favre. Really? Yeah. You know why? And, and it, it simply put, when you cover somebody and you've got them covered and you've got a quarterback with an arm and the ability to say, I don't care, I'm going to get it there, and he can. Yeah, he can so it's like you there. could be all over somebody, and you think like that. I got him jammed up, and then all of a sudden, zoop, they zip the ball in there, and you go, how did he do that? <laughs> um, and Favre was that guy. He had so much confidence, didn't care about throwing interception. Yeah. He's, he says to himself, I'm going to give my receiver a chance. I believe in my arm. I'm going to get it there, and he and, did. And he can scramble, which is what's a difficult moment for you once they're off the route. I mean, it is game over for the defense when he scrambles because you're seven, you know, four defensive linemen, three linebackers start running after the quarterback, and then huge holes open up in the secondary, mm -hmm. right? 
right? The, yep. And the scramble. And he's out there, and they're like, well, is he going to cross the line of scrimmage? Is he not going to cross? Yeah. And as he gets closer, they get closer, and then there's massive gaps, and then the receivers do what you do. They start ad libbing, and then you're yeah. done. Because <laughs> you can't touch him. You can't touch him anymore. Touch yeah, you're right. You practice stuff like that. All right, then practice. who is the best co host you've ever anchored with? Oh, wow. Um, Marv Albert. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> what? The answer is Abby Huntsman. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I really had fun. This was like, I, I felt like it was a conversation the entire weekend, so it was very easy for me to be here. And, I mean, obviously, I'm a little bit out of my element with it all being in sports background. And, you know, y'all throw a teleprompter at me without anybody telling teleprompters coming. That was kind of fun. <laughs> How many times was this? We're all looking here, and I see that. And I'm like, oh, that says Jason. I should <laughs> probably start reading now. And yesterday, I'm looking over here, and prompter's over there, and you just started reading like, Oh, once again, that said Jason. <laughs> That's, so. That's what's great about the show, though. The it, audience it really knows is we're real people. Sometimes we miss a line here or there. But that part of it like, was made it easier for me. But I think the easiest part is the conversation piece you have with you two sitting down, like I said, in an environment that I'm not totally immersed in. Like, this isn't mm -hmm. what I do on a weekly basis, you know, topics. It's, a, it's tough to jump into that. Yeah, and, and have, a, have a valid opinion, you know what I mean? Not just an opinion. Like, I've got those. But you want to make sure it's actually backed with something mm -hmm. instead of just a, you know, an opinion. Yep. So. Well, you did a great job. Thank you. Well done, sir. Appreciate yep. it. It was a ton of fun. And Keith, thank you. Keith, you're the yeah. star of the show. Yeah. Thank you. Keith, you had, a, you had a good day. I, I got to give you that. <laughs> Although, gosh, I hope they have that second pass on film, too. Yeah, they that was don't. more realistic. Erase the tape. Erase the tape. <laughs>